rehearsing, uh, you know, this uh, great show about Om Kulthum, a tribute to a tribute to Om Kulthum, the voice of Egypt. And Om Kulthum, I think, was a voice of a lot of things in the Arabs, Middle East, and all that. And we're going to talk to the artistic director, Cassandra Shura. You've been doing this for a while. I, uh, you know, the idea is to bring uh, Arabic culture and Arabic uh, uh, history and uh, Arabic music uh, in the through, best way that uh, I dancing, can yeah. through dancing mm -hmm. and. Uh, so now you, you really uh, taken a, uh, on yourself a, a big uh, a big task, you know. You bring an omukal to it's this. It's a big job. Yeah, it's big, true. big, big bite here. And there's so much material that she has. There's no way we could cover it all. I mean, we could only do so much. So in an hour and a half or two hours, you can maybe get like six or eight pieces in. Yeah. So you know, omukal is such a complicated figure. Yes. And uh, I think the title of this performance uh, is the voice of Egypt, and she was the voice of a lot of other things besides yes, Egypt, outside yes. of Egypt, and, uh, and I think for me it was the voice of love, and voice of lovers, and all of this, I, I, and voice of I, men, I, pressing uh, their their feeling was in the thing at the time from the 40s yeah. and 50s and 60s. No, no, I agree with that and I think that's true for a lot of people that she was their voice of their emotional expression. Yeah. Uh, and for some people I think there was maybe like a little bit of political expression but I think mostly she was the voice of people's emotional expression and you can see because everything stopped on Thursday nights when she was singing live on the radio, I mean there was no nothing bad going on while, you know, while she was singing. I mean, the whole Arab world, Arab-speaking world, would stop at that time. Um Kulsum uh, was given so many names, uh, Diva, the, the star of the East, uh, the voice of Egypt, but I think the name that I think as Egyptians get a hold of him is the Set, the Lady. Oh, the Lady. The, uh, it's yeah, just the, the Lady. Yeah, the Lady. No, yeah. and it, that name is so powerful. It for, is for a, for a woman, master millions of, uh, of men, yes, and uh, can control her with her voice. I don't want to get too political. I mean, the feminist part of the role of Om Kulthum and that things, and uh, uh, how her music bring that powerful, dignified uh, woman that mastering all these men in the Middle East. Well, not just men. She's mastering everybody. I mean, that's the power of great art. That yeah. is the power of yeah. art, whether it's a man or a woman. I mean, in this case, it was a woman, and she was extremely powerful in her art. I don't know in her personal life. You know, if it's the same thing, it's a lot of times great artists are not so great in their personal life, but they're, they're able to really speak to people in their artistic life, so, uh, and yeah, she's amazing. I agree with the, I mean, you can't, I don't know about the feminist perspective. Some people have put that a lot on top, on her, but I think, you know, her, her period of time, I'm sure she had her troubles, like becoming a singer at the beginning. I yeah, know she yeah. had her troubles becoming a singer at the beginning. Um, just but, pretend to be a boy. To, yeah, to so great, she's supposed to pretend to be a boy. <laughs> Do is just listen to the music to really, get the feeling of how this song should be danced to. Very light, airy. Uh, you know, in the end, I mean, it was her amazing talent that conquered everybody, really. I mean, it, Westerners too, when you listen to her and you start to like hear the amazing emotion in her voice and how incredible it is no matter what she sings. I like to think of something that's really light and airy and flowery and calm. Am I Your program, and I know you've done your research, you prepare. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, we know Amr Kalsum, we know her history. What are you, what, what new are you bringing in this uh, uh, program? So, uh, one of the things I think a lot of times, you know, like because I'm, uh, I do different things, you know, all the time, right? So, and I'm, I teach around the country and I teach around the world, and I see people dancing uh, to Umkathum music, and I. And, and sometimes I'm not happy with that, and sometimes I am happy with it. It depends on who's doing what. And so I'm trying to like present the music and the dance in the most respectful way possible that still reflects those emotions that I'm feeling from that music, that, I, that I'm feeling from her. And I'm also trying to bring her voice. Now, most of the music that 
that you'll hear is recorded. Not it's not recorded. It's it'll be live, played live. But she's not singing, of course. So some of it will be instrumental and it'll be live. But for some of the people, because I don't think a lot of people have heard her voice lately, a few of the pieces I'm trying to use her voice, like the piece you were watching today, or de Gumio, I'm trying to use a recorded version of her voice so that people can hear it. And I especially feel like in the dance community that I'm part of that people have become divorced from that, um, the only way I can describe it is like the Egyptianness of that music with her voice. Mm -hmm. And they don't know what her voice sounds like and they don't know what the music was like when she was singing. They have these sort of pop, uh, pop music versions of Um Kalthum songs which are not very deep, shall we say. You know, they're nice, they're superficial, yeah. they're fun at a party, but they're not expressing the emotion that you get from the original music. So I'm trying to bring that to the to the concert as much as possible. I feel I, I have um, I feel like as if I were an audience member, I would be looking at a very heavenly garden and the flowers would be coming alive and that's how we're made to feel when we're performing. Uh, she <laughs> meant a lot. To, uh, to us yes. growing up, and we really yes. didn't think other people were listening to it. Just, yeah. This is our Mukulsum, we're waiting a Thursday, first yeah. uh, the Thursday of Thursday the day, the, uh, months, yeah. and, and now I go out and everybody's talking about Mukulsum. Even Israel, they listen to Mukulsum. They I say, do. No, yeah. please, yeah, take, they, Jerusalem, <laughs> take Jerusalem and leave my own. I mean, even in North Africa, you know, sometimes I'm in North Africa and I don't mean Egypt, North yeah, Africa. Yeah. Um, taking your time with all the movements. Um, so you can really uh, let the beauty come through on stage like a bouquet of flowers would in a room or a garden. I went to a shop and they're playing Kothum and it's not really their music exactly but they still, it speaks to them, you know. But I just think that there's something really, there's just something really special about the music, the way she sings it. I, it's always hard for me to hear someone else do a cover of her song. It's like you listen to them sing and your mind goes immediately to like what she sounded like singing the song and the interpretation of it and you think, well, this is just like silly. <laughs> <laughs> You have to remember that people have a, pers a really deep personal relationship with those songs. If you don't have that personal relationship yourself, you won't be doing it justice. I mean, it, what, on whatever level, you have to have that. You have to feel it somehow. It might not be exactly the same way that you feel it, but it has to be authentic to yourself that you feel that music or you can't do it. I keep bouquets of flowers in my house all the time um, just because it uh, lightens up the room and it fills the energy um, more positively and so I think yellow flowers are also a friendship. So. We have the music, we have the voice, we have the song itself. Now we kind of, kind of uh, Putting dance on yeah, it. Yeah, draw it with uh, yeah, the movement and the dancing. What does it add to all of this? Well, it's a, I mean, like in any, like in anything in this, it should be the physical, the embodiment of what you hear and feel from the music. So it should be like the feeling of the music that is is physically available for you to see it. So when you see, so when you see dancers dancing or soloists dancing to it, that you feel what that person is feeling or that group is feeling, and it gives you the feeling of that music in uh, visually, mm -hmm. as opposed to just the oral, mm -hmm. you know, like the oral way of doing it, which you know. Honestly, when I'm listening to music, if there's nobody dancing to music, I close my eyes. <laughs> because I don't need to see the band or the singer a lot of times. I don't need to see them. Um Kalsum, you don't because, you know, she didn't dance and she's not a pop singer. No. So the handkerchief expresses a lot. And we have a piece that I'm using the handkerchief to express a lot. But so I, when I'm, a lot of times when I'm listening to music, it doesn't matter what kind, um, I'll close my eyes. I'm at a symphony, I close my eyes, and I don't watch the orchestra, I just listen to what they're giving me. But when it's dance, then I'm watching to see if I feel like these two things 
are a whole. All right? I want them to be a whole. I want them to be connected. I want the dance to be connected to the music, and I want the feeling of the dance and the music to be the same thing for me as I'm watching it. And if they're not the same thing and they're like diametrically opposed, then I feel schizophrenic. <laughs> I love the smell of jasmine flowers, so they just make me happy any time. There's nothing substitute live music. No, it's, live it's no music. substitute for that. I no, I so agree. Good. Also, I really do think that it's much easier for a Western audience that's not familiar with Arabic music to hear the music when it's being played live in front of you because you can actually see them play it mm -hmm. and listen to You know what the instrument is. You're not just listening to a recording wondering what and the instrument is. Right, and how it's played, and you, I mean, and the musician, because you're getting that feedback from the musician as they're playing it and they're, you know, putting their energy out through the music and then, you know, you're getting it back, it's kind of that cycle of energy that just keeps going between the audience and the musician, then I think there's, there, it's easier to get involved in it and understand it when, and then just listening to a recording where, you don't know what's going on in the recording. You can't really hear, especially for Westerners that don't know the makam system. <laughs> you know, no, uh, yeah, they might not know that that's not out of tune. <laughs> but when you're hearing it in context, it yeah. doesn't sound that way. Uh -huh. You can understand. You can understand it even if you don't understand it. Like um, intellectually, it you can feel it. So yeah, I think it's a good That's idea. That's great. Uh, well, thank you so much, yeah, Cass thank Cassandra you, Ashur, the artistic director of Jawahir Dance Company. She's been really enriching us with this experience for many years. Uh, now you have the, uh, the boys of Egypt with a tribute to the great diva Om Kulsum. We're looking forward to uh, this uh, performance and this program. Yeah.